Hey everybody and welcome back. Um, if you're with me for the first time, my name is Melissa Reed and I am an abstract mixed media artist from Pennsylvania. And I'm just popping in here really quick before we get started because I've had a few questions about the item that I use to make my polka dot uh, collage papers. So I went back to the Dollar Tree where I got it because I wasn't 100% sure what it was. And it turns out it is this. It is, I got it in the floral section at the Dollar Tree. It's called Adhesive Pearl Wrap. And let me show you on my used one here. So it has actually an adhesive backing on it. And what this is actually used for, um, you can peel these individual little strips off and they are like a, um, I don't know what you'd wanna call it, like a, a piping or a trim. Trim is the word that I'm looking for. And that, I guess, is what this is traditionally used for. But for me, it makes the absolute best polka dots. I use it as a stamp or I'll roll the, um, I'll roll my brayer over it with some acrylic paint, use it as a stamp or roll some paint on the gel plate and use it to pick up. And that's basically what it is. So I hope that is helpful for you. And for those of you that are interested, I hope you can find one somewhere near you. Now I'm really excited to show you today's video. I'm using a new technique on it. And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about that technique today, but next week's video I'm going to do just on that new technique. So let's go ahead over and get started. Okay, so today I am working on a canvas as opposed to a board. And uh, this is a gessoed canvas. And I just went ahead and pulled some colors out. And a lot of times I get asked why I bother laying down color, or at least the colors that I choose initially, when just about everything gets covered up in the end anyway. And the reason for that is because you have to start somewhere and because I am an intuitive artist I don't necessarily have a natural starting point as if I was going to maybe paint a landscape or a portrait so it's just good to get that intimidation of a blank white canvas gone and kind of just move from there and part of my process in the intuitive process is just kind of starting and seeing where the piece takes me and that's why I do this even though you might not be able to really see much or sometimes any at all of what goes on the base layer. But I'm starting here with my typical color palette which is some darker colors, there's some Payne's Gray, there's some Burnt Sienna, and I have um, a turquoise and a teal down there as well. Now I'm going in with a little bit of Grumbacher Red, which as I've mentioned in my videos is my absolute favorite color of red. It has a nice little gloss to it and it's just a very rich kind of um, saturated color that I really like to use a whole lot. I'm going in to just brighten it up a little bit because once I had all of those dark colors laid down, I just felt like it needed a little bit of brightness. So again, to bring in a little bit of brightness, I'm going in with a cadmium yellow medium hue, I believe. And that's just kind of, I didn't wait for the red to dry, so some of it's mixing and um, it's getting orange in places and some of it's staying yellow, but it's just bringing a little bit of a brightness and a warmth to the canvas that wasn't there before. You'll see here that I'm going in with my color shaper and I added a little bit of water to the canvas and now I am just kind of pushing the color around and it's revealing some of the colors underneath and I really liked the way that looked so I kind of went nuts with it and kind of just did it all over the whole entire canvas and it's making these wonderful little kind of square and rectangle patterns everywhere which I really liked it wasn't again what I set out to do because I didn't really have a plan but once I started going I really liked the way it looked. Again most of it gets covered up but where that paint is getting pushed it's creating a line of paint which is going to dry raised and give me a little bit of texture underneath there that I wouldn't have necessarily had before and it's going to add some visual interest and kind of trap and hold on to paint and um, well, yeah, paint that I put on in these future layers. 
So now I went in with just a titanium white. And why I'm doing this is I love the look of white when you can see a little bit of color coming through underneath. So it shows up dark in spots, as you can see. I'm not going for complete coverage here, obviously. I'm just, I just wanna get the white on top there. And you can see the darker colors coming through. And I'm going in kind of with the same shape. I'm using that color shaper again. So it's creating more rectangles and more squares. So going along with the same um, textural patterns that I created underneath. But it's giving the white dimension in a way that I think is interesting and in a way that you wouldn't necessarily get just by brushing it on. I just think it's another added element. I love to work in layers. My work is all about layers and this is a really cool way to instantly create some texture and some tonality and depth using just one color paint on top of other colors and your color shaper. Once I had all of the paint down that I wanted, I wanted to go in and kind of push some of it around again. And I tried using a card, but it really wasn't giving me the results that I wanted. So I just went back in with my color shaper and now I'm removing, um, removing the paint where I had a little bit too much built up, which is further allowing some of those dark tones to show from underneath and creating even more tonality and more depth in a interesting, and um, visually textural way. At this point, I'm still not sure exactly what direction the piece is going to go in, but I do really like the way this is working out. I love those tones that I'm getting, and it actually gives me a lot of ideas for future pieces where I could do this technique kind of intentionally from the start and really kind of have that be the focus. So once I removed the bulk of the paint, I decided to actually go in with a little bit of water and further remove even more, which is again, just adding even more depth and even more tones coming through. As you can see here, there's just a lot going on underneath there, a lot of layers that I think look really cool. But now I think it's time for some collage. So I have that collage paper there that I made and that is um, using the the um, polka dot stamp that I was talking about in the beginning there and actually what I did was I just stamped black uh, the polka dots black on top of some tissue paper and I had a little bit of extra Payne's gray mixed with a lot of matte medium that I brushed over that so that's what created that paper and I thought it would look really good there and because I used the tissue paper when I put down the matte medium and lay down that collage paper, it is kind of just melting right into the background. So you're not gonna actually really be able to tell unless you are up right on top of it, that that is collage. It almost just looks like it has become part of the canvas there. And that's a look that I really like. Now I'm just coming in with some different collage papers and trying them out, just trying to see what I think I want to go on there next. And I found another sheet that I had made that is uh, Payne's Gray as well. So it's going to go with the polka dot sheet that I had just put down. Plus there's a lot of Payne's Gray in the background. And so everything is kind of going together well. And there's a nice cohesive flow to the piece because I've used those same colors. That piece, I believe I used a stencil to create the circles on top of it. Um, but yeah, that's really all I did there with that. Now I'm just trying out some different collage papers because I'm not sure still exactly what I want to do here. But I do know that I want to add some more collage and probably some more paint. So what I decided here was to go in with some colors that I don't typically use. That is, I believe, Pale Rose. I will have to double check on that color. I'll put it in the description box along with all the other materials that I'm using. But it's like a, just a nice peachy kind of pink color. And I hardly ever use that color in my work, but I thought I'd step out of my comfort zone at least for a minute and try to get just some different shades down there that I don't typically work in. Then I'm just going back in with my color shaper and moving things around a little bit to mimic the shapes that I have underneath, which I did with my last two previous layers. 
And in addition to that peachy pink color, I'm going to go in with a little bit of green. And um, again, I'm going to have to double check the name of that. I will put it in the description for you. But again, these are colors that I don't use a lot and I really just wanted to change it up here today. Oh, but before I use the green, I went in with another kind of very pale peachy pink. They're very, very similar. You almost can't even tell, but this one's just a touch lighter. So again, it's, I'm just playing with tones and just trying to get different values down on there. Again, still not sure exactly where it's going to go, but I figured since I had this color, and this is a brand new color, you may have seen me opening it there, that I have never used that. So I thought it looked close enough to the other one that it might bring that together, and I think it worked out pretty well. But at this point, I'm going in with that green, and these are all sort of like pastel kind of colors, which again, definitely not something that's typically in my wheelhouse. I like darker, more browns and reds and teals and turquoise, but I thought with the muted colors already of the white over top of the darker tones and everything is kind of like a <clears throat> a light to a mid-range kind of value there, I would just keep going with that and put in that kind of... I just had to stop and go look. It is Windsor & Newton Pale Olive. That is the green color that I'm using right now. And the two pink colors were Windsor & Newton Pale Rose Blush and Artist's Loft Light Pink. That was gonna drive me crazy if I didn't go look. I thought we could use some line work in here now, so I just took a regular number two pencil and just went in and just started moving the pencil across the page. Again, the majority of that will get covered up, but not all of it, it just adds another layer. So now I'm going in to try to decide what kind of collage I might wanna add at this point. These are just some Payne's Gray circles with my polka dots that I had uh, made on, I think it's a piece of packing paper that I had. So it's a little thicker than what I typically use. And I keep moving them around because I know I wanna use them. I just can't really decide how. So when in doubt, go for more polka dots. And this is actually gold leaf polka dots on tissue paper that I made. And um, if you're interested in seeing that, I believe that's in my last video. I'll go ahead and put that up on the end for you there so you can take a look. But again, I'm putting this down and it's doing the same thing that the first sheet did. Because it's on the tissue paper, it is just kind of blending right in the background. I'm getting a little bit of a muting of the underneath colors, but mostly it's just melting right in and all you're seeing is the nice gold polka dots there right on top, while you're still able to see a lot of the pattern and texture and color coming through from underneath. Incidentally, I love the color shapers for applying the matte medium on the canvases versus on the, the boards. I mean, anything works on the boards, but because there's some give to the canvas and there's some give to the color shaper, I think it works really nicely to make sure that you work that matte medium in there. So that is just a stencil that I made, a circular stencil. I do end up using it, but not at this point. So right now I decide everything is way too light and mid-range and kind of boring and not very interesting to look at. So I definitely felt like I needed something darker. So these are just some collage papers that I had made. Um, I believe all I did with these ones, these are gel prints, and I just used some black acrylic paint on the gel plate and pulled it up, not worrying about any kind of texture or pattern or anything on it. The texture came from crinkles and that were already in the paper that I put in on purpose just to get a little texture. But other than that, there isn't any um, identifiable pattern or anything on these. I like to keep some sheets like that around just for these kind of situations where I know I want something dark. I don't necessarily want it to be patterned. I just need some dark shapes. And this kind of always is a good idea to, for me to at least to keep around. And here I'm not 100% sure what I want to do. I, I liked a lot of these directions that I was going in. I ultimately didn't end up using any of them, but I'm 
Again, if you've watched any of my other videos or if you're familiar with collage in general, you know that the nice thing about it is that you can try things out before you lay it down. It's much more forgiving than painting once the paint's down, then if you don't like it, you have to paint over it. But with the collage, you can rip and tear and cut and lay things out and see if it's going to work out for you or if it looks the way you want it to look or, you know, gives you that feel that the piece either has or you want it to have and kind of go from there. Until you glue it down, it can always be moved around. So like I said, I didn't end up using any of these pieces in the end, but as I'm going back and watching this to do the voiceover, I really do kind of like the way that those cutout squares look, and that might be an idea that I explore in another collage coming up here in the future. But it's always interesting having the uh, gift of hindsight with these when I go back to do the editing on my videos and I think, oh wow, I wonder why I made that decision or why I didn't just stick with that because that actually looks really cool. But when you're working on a piece and you've been working on it for a while, it's really easy to get too close to it and um, you kind of lose perspective almost. So that's why I shoot these in so many clips. Sometimes it's just simply because layers need to dry, the paint needs to dry, or maybe the adhesive needs to dry. But I also find it very useful to walk away for a while and come back with fresh eyes and maybe see something that I didn't see before. That's kind of what works for me. I mean, your mileage may vary, but I know this is typically true with a lot of artists and it's definitely something that I use on just about every piece that I make. You'll see here I go back to some polka dots because when in doubt, that's usually my go-to, but I laid them down, kind of wasn't loving it. I do really like the way that bottom square looks because you can really get that the pattern and that peach paint come through on there and I kind of wish I would have gone that route, but I didn't and that's just something that I will do on another piece. You might have seen that shiny blue paper that I just pulled there. That is actually a collage paper that I made using acrylic inks. And um, I will put a link to that video at the end also, but I've been trying to use that piece in so many videos and I just, it just doesn't really fit anywhere. And I love it so much that I kind of feel like it has to be perfect, which is a terrible trap to fall into. But one of these days, it's gonna be something awesome. Okay, so here I am going in with I believe that is Artist Loft Green Gold, which is a color that I love. I just felt like it needed to be warmed up a little bit so that's a color, that's one of my go-to colors for doing that. I either will go with the green gold or I will go with Grumbacher uh, Burnt Sienna. But I wanted the green in this one because I already had a little bit of green down and I just kind of wanted it to brighten up and also warm up at the same time. And I think that really did the trick. And I'm not going for full coverage here. I definitely do want some of the underneath parts to be visible. Um, I really like, the green gold is very transparent, which I like, and I like that I can see some of that peach coming out. I like that I can see the polka dots coming out on both sides, although a lot of the gold leaf in the polka dots on the right-hand side did get covered up, but I go back in at the very end and add a little bit more in, so not all is lost with that. Okay, so I have here some black India ink, and I decided I wanted to use a technique called acemic writing. I've heard it pronounced acemic and acemic, and I prefer to say acemic, so that's what we're gonna go with. So what that is, is basically a form of abstract writing. And what I'm doing here is not writing words, but they look like words, and the eye translates them as some sort of written language. And the reason why I am not actually just writing out some words there is because I don't necessarily want this to be readable. I mean, I don't want it to be readable at all. I am an abstract artist and I like the idea of having the abstract writing in my pieces. I could very well have written some kind of text or some poetry or just some random thoughts on there, but that isn't the point of it to me. The point of it is just to have that look of writing on there. I, it's a quality that I really enjoy. 
in art and I have not really used this technique a whole lot. This is actually one of the first times holding it up there so you can kind of see. It looks just like writing, but it's not. And next week I'm actually going to do a video on different techniques for that because I think it's kind of cool and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it and used it and it's nothing new. It's just not something that I've really used before so I do want to kind of go into a little bit of detail for you. So once I have a lot of the writing on there I decide that I would like it to be a little thicker in places. I'm using a pen and a nib here and um, this is something that I've just had laying around in my art box since I was in art school. Um, and I like the way that it looks, but I feel like it could be a little bit darker in spots. I want it to look a little messier, a little more unrefined, like that type of writing tended to look. So all I did was go back in and just keep dipping the pen in the ink and going over some of the high points and the low points of what looks to be letters, just kind of making them stand out a little bit darker. And you can start to see here how doing that really kind of makes it pop a little bit more and brings a little more interest and a little more depth into the piece. I should say here that I put a little bit of the writing in the upper left hand corner too, but um, I did not hit record before I did that, so if you'll see in the next clip, there is going to be writing up there that you are not going to see me do. That's why. And there it is. So at this point, I decide I do want to use some of those circles that I did on the packing paper, and I'm kind of just layering them over top of the black because the black squares were great and I loved having that darkness there, but I thought it needed something a little more interesting to draw the eye and have a little bit more of a purposeful focus point, like focal point there. And I think that's an important thing, at least for me to keep in mind with making abstract art. You definitely want to keep the principles of art in mind such as like balance in composition and compositionally I just think this was working a little bit better. Oh I do want to say right here that I used black India ink and when I put the uh, matte medium on there the black India ink is water soluble it's water based so it was actually lifting up and you'll see it smears a little bit but I just go in and fix that again at the end. So in order to not have that happen next time, um, I'm going to try some watered down acrylic paint, but I also have some acrylic inks that I think would work nicely too. And because of the binders in those, they're not going to bleed when they get wet. I'm kind of trying to decide here if I want to do some more collage and I feel like that piece there needed just a little bit of polka dot so I cut a tiny little piece of the black polka dots on the tissue paper off there and kind of just smoothing that over the uh, packing paper circle. Now comes the fun part, <laughs> at least for me. I decided I wanted to add some very transparent teal circles. So I got out that circle stencil that I had made and I have some very, very thinned out teal. Is that teal? I believe that's actually turquoise. It is. Some very, very thinned out turquoise paint and I thinned it out with the matte gel medium. And the great thing about that, and I've said this in my other videos, is you can get so many different tones doing it that way just by having one color of paint, one tube of paint, because that is not a transparent paint to begin with. It is a very opaque paint actually, but because I added so much of the medium to it, it is nice and transparent. I added it to just the degree that I wanted, and if I want to go back and darken up around the edges, I can, and I actually do that in some of the places here just to make a little more of a kind of an outline against the stencil. 
So what I'm doing is just using my color shaper and I'm kind of dragging it from the edges in. That way it doesn't allow the paint to get underneath the stencil. And I found that that works pretty well. So once that is all dry, I just felt like it needed a little bit of darkness up at the top and bottom. So I found another piece of collage paper that I had made out of my uh, famous polka dot stamper there. And that kind of does the trick. It brings it together. It draws the weight kind of to the top and the bottom so that it's not all just like sinking right down into the center. And it has the polka dots on it, so it is still, it kind of makes visual sense because I have the polka dots in several other places on the piece. So all in all, I think it was exactly what I needed to balance that out just a little bit. Now at this point, I wanted to go in and fix the smears that had occurred when I put the matte medium over top of the ink. And that's what I'm doing there. I'm just kind of going in and going over the parts that I lost and also kind of bringing the lettering or the visual lettering up to the top of the piece again, because a lot of it was underneath that paint that I had laid down and that was okay. But when I started adding it and it was nice and dark right on top there, I just liked the way that looked better. So I went in, in not every place, but in some places sporadically, and I touched that up and darkened it up. And I kind of thought that it really just added just enough impact in places where it was needed. I decided at this point that I would like some lettering going in the complete opposite direction, not dead center, but just to the side of the center there, because I thought that that would look interesting, kind of juxtaposed next to the other lettering that was running horizontal. So this will be vertical when I turn the piece back upright, and I think it just adds enough interest and enough enough of something that'll draw your eye right there where it necessarily wasn't before. So I signed the piece here because I thought it was just about done, but then I let it sit for a little while and I decided, nope, I need some more gold polka dots. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I went ahead and got my metal leaf adhesive and I'm just putting a little tiny bit of it down on some scratch paper and I'm getting my brayer. I'm getting my brayer coated in just enough of it to give me just a small area. And I'm gonna put that right on my polka dot stamper and lay it down in just a couple of areas of the piece. And once I let that cure for about 20 minutes or a half an hour, I'm gonna go ahead in with my metal leaf crumbs now in my little crumb cup and kind of just smooth those over with my hands because that adhesive is dry and that'll kind of just work everything in to right where that was so that it gets caught in all the places that I want it to. Then I'm using my brush to just brush away all of the excess and I am left with some shiny polka dots that I think really kind of added just the right amount of shine. And there we go, there is today's piece. Uh, this will be available on my Etsy shop. I will have all of that information in the description. Thank you all for hanging out with me again and watching me make this beautiful piece. And um, thank you for everybody that has subscribed. As of right now, I am about 17 away from 2000. So if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, go ahead and do that right now. It really helps me out and give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much. And I will look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great day.